What is up, boys and girls? Today, I'm going to be talking about my Drain Life Lich, which is probably one of the coolest characters that I've ever made. If you guys are paying attention to the footage, it's basically my Wraith Lord uh, Fernando character, but I'm the Fernando now. We shoot a million lasers, and we also are playing probably the most buggy build that I have ever experienced. Everything that you are seeing is low level. This non-empowered monolith, the character is only level 80. This is going to be a build diary. However, due to the bugs, this character is only doing 30% of its actual damage right now. And for that reason, I am telling you not to play this build. It does seem really good, and it does seem like it's going to have a lot of potential, and I will continue to play it. But for you, I can't recommend it. Uh, so, a couple of the things immediately is going to be that we are using the Stygian Coal. This is a new item, and I had to do a lot of testing to figure out how it works, what it does, uh, when it doesn't, when it says that it would. And this is the primary reason why this build is so bugged. So, it changes our drain life from a sucking motion to a lasering one, and it is super cool. But, because of this, a lot of the nodes on the skill tree do not work, and some of them do work. And I don't know if the primary reason why this build is such a blaster in the first place isn't because of a bug. But another thing that's very important is when I said that it's only doing 30% of its actual damage, uh, that's because of the unique item itself. When it says 3% more Stygian beam damage per 10 current mana, it, this actually just doesn't work. And as you can see, I have a lot of mana, 536. This is just a random character that I put together with random gear. I leveled it up, so I don't have anything particularly impressive on this build. You can see I have uh, two rings with no LP on them. I can get LP on this. Uh, I've got forging potential here, forging potential here. This weapon's like, okay, uh, this is seriously whatever. Just completely random gear. And yet it is blasting, despite the fact that the biggest scaler for the entire build, the 3% more Stygian beam damage per tanker in mana does not work on top of other things that I will also be explaining. As far as I can tell, the 1% increased Stygian beam frequency per intelligence does work, but there are some wonky things in regards to this. Drain Life is normally a channeling ability. However, you can pick up Dark Shackles and Dark Shackles makes it so that you are now using a cast and it places a little circle on the ground. If you get increased duration, it's a pretty lengthy duration of five seconds. And for that reason, we can move around with a buggy character because this is one of the other million bugs. There's a lot of visual bugs with this build. And uh, we're just shooting lasers, right? But if we place multiple of these, you can see that it really starts going full Gatling gun. But the way that it targets is that it only targets towards the latest placed circle. So you can see that even though there are circles here, I'm only shooting in this direction. So you can use this to your advantage or to your disadvantage, but that is one of the biggest things. And if you look at this also, and you pay close attention to it, it says per 10 current mana. So what's very important on this build is the actual mana sustain. And as you know, in Last Epoch, it's very difficult to get mana. The base mana regeneration is eight, and there's no way to scale the flat mana regeneration, so you have to do it on a percentage basis, but getting 100% increased mana regeneration will only double the amount of mana you're getting, and it takes a lot of effort uh, to get there in the first place. So for my character, I really wanted to try uh, Wandering Spirits. This is for a couple reasons. The main one, the mana one, is because if you pick up Eternal Servitude, which states, if Wandering Spirits are active when you start channeling Drain Life, it does not expire until you stop channeling. Which is weird, because we don't channel. And things like the 75% chance to ignite on a hit while channeling, or the damned, it doesn't work. We're not channeling. I've tested it with some of the passive points, like Doom Herald. It doesn't seem to work. We're not channeling. I've tested it with the... Ward retention, it doesn't work. But this does work, which kind of indicates that it's a bug. But is it, though? Because there are other things. Damage multipliers work. 
and power drain is good. However, Stupefy, as other people have reported, does not work. I didn't manage to uh, test it quite yet because there's been a lot to test. But this doesn't work. But then Lay Waste, which is just another multiplier node, because now we're no longer draining life or shooting bolts. So this is pretty much free damage. It does actually work. But then we pick up Virulence, which changes us from Necrotic to Poison Damage. Only works, sort of. Our pools are now green, which means that we're, we're necrotic, we're uh, poison. I'm using two Tongues of Aberrant Seer, which give me plus one to poison skills, which actually affects the drain life. But the damage of the beams doesn't change. <laughs> They're still shooting necrotic beams. And the pool on the ground doesn't do anything. This is just a visual indicator that your bolts are going to be shooting there. So... It's kind of a mess, and you might be wondering why am I picking this up then? It's for the plus levels. Essentially, I can pick this up for free for one point, and then I get the other one from the ring. We get plus one passive point, and it allows us for a much better skill tree because we don't have to travel through here, allowing us to get 20% damage. But why are the Wandering Spirits so important, you might ask? Because, yeah, the current mana needs to remain current, so you have to be topped off. It's not based off of your maximum mana, it's based off of this thing down here. And so, with Wandering Spirits, you can pick up Infusing Souls, which states you have a chance to gain mana whenever a spirit expires. This is incredible. Even though it's only a 15% chance, it's 12 mana, and we are spawning a lot of spirits. We cannot pick up Song of the Lost Chantry, because uh, I'm pretty sure that they, a part of the reason why everything here is so bugged out is because they recently changed the way that this node works. Uh, so in the past you would be able to get like the frequency rate of the, the reveal rate and then like bug it out and everything. And I'm pretty sure that this whole build works because they changed this node and it broke a bunch of other things. But yeah, Wandering Spirits is incredible. Not only does it give us mana, it does a ton of damage. This is a poison build. Uh, we can get up to 800 poisons right now with borderline random gear. Uh, we can pick up a bunch of reveal frequency. This is going to help us with that. And we can convert it to poison and then utilize incredibly powerful things such as the newly added Warlock um, Poison Overload, which gives us 400% poison penetration, just by the way. It's uh, pretty incredible. And it does fix a lot of the single target issues because for poison builds, this ability only hits one target. It hits it frequently, but... It only hits one. So with the Wandering Spirits that are always active, you can see that they clear really freaking well. And they seriously are always active. I mean, my hands off the keyboard. I'm not doing anything. You can still see they're continuously spawning. As long as I am shooting beams at any point and with a little bit of time lag too, sometimes I can stop shooting for just a little bit, maybe half a second, and it'll continue to spawn the Spirits. Um, it's pretty crazy. Everything comes together super nicely. But again, I don't know if it's intended. Um, we're only doing 30% of the damage that we should be doing. And uh, I don't even know if we would be able to sustain the mana in the first place if it wasn't for the fact that uh, this node works when technically it shouldn't because we are no longer channeling. And that is why I'm telling you guys not to play the build. I will put it in the description if you want to play it. I do think that despite everything, it is pretty strong. The new poison is pretty good. We get to use Aura of Decay. I'm using Fume Weaver, which I'm going to have to itemize around. I'm not even using Poison Bolt or anything like that. I just have AoE here. And because I don't have gear, I have to give resistances here. This is a Lich build, so we are using Reaper Form. We get the Poison Global Chance here, and we get the Duration over here. And then most importantly, we get the Death Seal, which is a staggering like 260% uh, chance to poison on top of just an insane amount of damage, mobility, increased uh, damage, armor, stun avoidance, you name it. This thing is just cracked. Everybody knows that Death Seal is one of the main reasons to play Lich in the first place. I know that uh, some people mentioned playing a Warlock variant. I personally have a soft spot for Liches, so I think this is going to work a lot better for me with the degree of sustain that I want. But yeah, that's kind of the overall idea of the build right now. 
just getting a bunch of poison damage and uh hoping for the best i'll continue to experiment with this character and see where it takes me uh maybe they'll fix the bugs maybe the build will stop working altogether maybe it'll actually start doing three times the damage uh that would be great because it already is a pretty freaking good build especially considering that liches aren't particularly popular right now and there's still so many more things that i can improve on it the thing about poison builds overall is that to just have really incredible scaling right because the more gear you get th they get so multiplicatively stronger compared to other builds and especially on a build like this where we can use our prefixes on gear to get more damage from the mana and then we use int which is one of the most powerful attributes in the game to get a larger amount of casts and then the more mana we get on top of all of that allows us to put down more circles to blast even more as far as defenses are uh we're just gonna cap out our endurance this is going to be yeah a low life build in that way so as long as we're chilling on the threshold i might get a chest piece with uh life as threshold and then a helmet i believe with life as threshold eventually defensively it should be pretty good the build probably is going to get it to around 4,000 life i might incorporate some ward or something in the future i should be able to get pretty substantial amounts of armor uh with everything active and operational eventually with the ward maybe i can seal it to get armor from death seal maybe i can get a little bit more on this tree with passive such as harrowing armor obviously there's blessings and everything else so defensively i think it's going to be pretty good if i ever need more speed we can take things like swiftness over here uh, for a bunch more speed. We can take movement speed over here if we don't need more of the increased damage once our gear is pretty good because you can get a lot of increased damage over time and poison. And then we can also, you know, just get more movement speed on my boots that still have 24 4G potential and they're only uh, on tier 2. I mean, like I said, I'm using very, very, very random gear. So overall... Damage, upward strand, survivability, upward strand, uh, mobility, clear, everything is looking great. But we are at the mercy of EHG, awaiting. Is it a bug? Or is it not? We'll have to wait. Alright, thanks for watching everybody. Don't play this build. Or do. I'm not your real dad. I can't tell you what to do. See you guys in the next one. Bye.